Hi all, uh, I'm Harish. Uh, I'm from Stream Processing Platform team at Intuit. I'm a software engineer. Along with me, uh, we have Antonio and Rema to present this uh, slide. So to give to give you like overview, like uh, what we do at uh, Intuit, like uh, we are from a Stream Processing Platform team uh, where uh, we own and manage a Stream Processing Platform for the customer who has like streaming applications. Our uh, team like uh, is responsible for creating a self serve tools uh, and to manage the stream processing pipelines. Our tech stack is like uh, we built uh, our platform on Kubernetes and we use uh, Beam uh, as a uh, pro programming language for the stream processing applications, and we use Flink as our uh, runner engine. So oftentimes, like so some of the customers, like where, where we uh, manage a platform, some customers comes and uh, with, with certain problems, uh, like hey, uh, we are moving from uh, we are moving our data store application to stream processing platform, and we have data in S3, DynamoDB, or flat files. We want like to convert into that one. Those uh, those are some of these cases, and some use cases uh, would vary from hey, how do we debug uh, or uh, how can I go? Oh, means uh, there is a problem. How, how to do this one? So for this one, like uh, we created this tool to make uh, their lives easy. So today, like I'll, I'll describe you, like like how, how our typical uh, stream processing pipelines look like, attitude, and what are the problems, and then how uh, this uh, tooling will help you. Antonio will go deeper like how uh, it has been solved and then uh, what are the technologies we are using prema will give you the demo and some of the use cases like how we are using this particular tool uh, uh, in intuit our in our applications like the typical uh, stream processing pipeline look, looks like this so we have a source and we have a sync and then uh, customers will store their uh, intermediate data in the uh, states so the typical source would be like Kafka and then sync will be uh, Kafka. In between, customer uh, use a couple of transformations and then use some state store. To give an example, like Flink, like we use RocksDB or uh, Firestorm. So what uh, we are uh, aiming to solve in this uh, using this tool is, so if customer like uh, wants to read uh, data from like, bootstrap data from uh, bootstrap the data and create their uh, uh, states uh, then we use this one and uh, let's example like like they have the entire data in s3 or uh, years of data in s3 or dynamo db these tool can be like pretty handily helpful level so that it reads all the data and then do the transformation then create some checkpoints or save points these concepts are like uh, will be explained by antonio like uh, yeah to give you an idea like flink has like a mechanism called um like in, in beam like we consider it as like value state like which is like a state store in between so the people can store their data and intermediate data structure and backfill from different sources like this is a pretty uh, common use cases like uh, where uh, they have like years of worth of data and then uh, they want to backfill that data and then start their streaming applications so like so for this one this tool will be pretty handy and modify the current data and state uh, to give an example let's say some streaming application is been running and then uh, they do see like some discrepancy or uh, they wanted to uh, change the intermediate data structures it's not like a, a regular db kind of thing the intermediate data so some somebody needs to like uh, open that like uh, see the intermediate data structure how it is being uh, stored and then uh, correct the data so for that one this the this tool will be um, helpful and migrate from different engines currently uh, if let's say the customer is running pure flink or if the customer is running beam on top of shamja and they would like to move from the state store to link. So these are the use cases like uh, this tool can be uh, helpful. And debug the state. Yeah, somebody uh, wants to um, learn or like uh, they want to 
do the uh, dry run or do the testing kind of thing uh, this uh, this can be like how the intermediate data structures are being stored and what is the value it is being stored uh, how it is uh, flowing the data this can be viewed uh, from this tool and uh, throughout the entire like we'll uh, follow this example so to give you like real world scenario like let's say uh, i'm a uh, store app store owner and i would like to know uh, the cumulative sum of like all the sales so far i had uh, example let's say so far i'm uh, storing my data uh, in uh, flat files uh, how many sales are kind of thing now i would like to move to a streaming applications uh, where uh, i do have uh, i want to receive like uh, data like immediately in real time for that this, this is the example so, like we will target that means like whatever the data that i have like so far uh, i need to bootstrap that data uh, and then uh, whenever the sale record comes like i need to add, uh, add that data that's the example like uh, we are aiming so yeah as mentioned here like so the slide uh, the states will be like current uh, in a flat files like so far if you have like 300 400 500 watches and then the new if the new event comes like the watch uh, quantity should go to 301 and then it should be in a real time that's an example um so Antonio will uh, explain like how we will bootstrap and then how uh, it can be uh, the new data will be attached as I mentioned, the typical application would be like uh, we'll receive the data from Kafka and then we'll do a couple of uh, transformations and then throw the data into output. So whenever we receive the data, like uh, we convert into a purchase record and then we uh, we, uh, we 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 key, we get the uh, item by key and then. Uh, add the cumulative sum in a, and then store that sum in an intermediate value. So we will uh, we'll extract the state uh, and then uh, throw um, put that into output format. So now Antonio will explain like how we we solve this uh, using this tool. Over to you, Antonio. Uh, thank you. Um, yes. Um, so before we describe. <clears throat> the state processing toolkit. Uh, let's look at what the other challenges of, or what tasks a developer needs to do in order to read the state states from a BIM pipeline. So as mentioned, a pipeline usually reads data from a source, like does a whole bunch of transformations and output data to a sync. <clears throat> During the transformation, we usually generate some data states. The data states, the data states usually contains a key and a value. For example, in a simple pipeline, the key is an item and the value will be either quantities or model. Depending on the runner, <clears throat> the states are usually saved using some kind of state store. Um, for example, when using the Flink runner, the states could be saved in the save one file uh, using a RocksDB state store. So the first thing a developer usually needs to do is to understand uh, how the key and values are organized in the state store. And then the key and value are stored uh, in an encoded form, depending on the data type. And sometimes they may even use a customized coder. For example, in BIM, if the data is a string, it will use a BIM string UTF-8 coder. <coughs> and since it is running on a Frank runner, it will encapsulate the coder with a coder type serializer. Therefore, the next thing it developer needs to do is to find out how to decode the key and the value. And once the key and value are decoded, the decoded data can be stored in some external data store like S3, Dynamo, or even local file system. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, similarly, to bootstrap a beam pipeline uh, with some initial state. A developer first needs to know what is the key and what is the associated value. Based on the data type, a developer needs to encode the data back to the proper encoded form and then store the encoded data in the state store. <coughs> and finally, we can recreate a save point uh, and bootstrap the pipeline with the save point. 
Next slide, please. So, uh, <clears throat> to free up the developers that been doing all the all this thing, uh, we provide this state pricing toolkit. So let's so now let's uh, give a brief overview of the state pricing toolkit. Our state pricing toolkit basically abstract out all the tasks that I described earlier in two main features: a stage reader to read the state from the save point, and a state bootstrapper to create a save point based on some data. For the safe reader and state bootstrapper, <coughs> we'll take a configuration file. The configuration file <coughs> describes the state data such as a data type, or if there is any customized code. State reader reads the data from the save point file using a backend state store, decode the data, and save the data to some external storage. Uh, <coughs> similarly, the bootstrapper, the state bootstrapper, reads the state from the external storage and code the data and then save the data in a save point file. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, before we demo our tool, let's go over the high-level design briefly. Mm. Um, both our state reader and state bootstrapper use the Frank state pricing API. For state reader, we define a data source which is responsible of reading data from a save point. The data source takes in the input format object, a state backend, and a set of coders. It extracts data from the save point and holds the state in some intermediate data structure. It also defines a data sync, which is responsible of transforming the intermediate data structure to the external storage. The data sync will take in an output format object and controls the flow of data to the external data storage. Next slide, please. The state bootstrappers <coughs> adopt a similar design pattern. It has a data source which reads the data from some external storage, such as S3, local file system, or Dynamo. The data is passed through a few transformation steps and then got written to a data sync, which is a save point file in this case. Each, data imp each uh, input data record will go through a few transformation steps. First, it extracts the key and the value components from the data record. <clears throat> Second, the stage variables are created according to the configuration, and the value components will be saved in the uh, stage variables. <clears throat> Finally, a flink operator which models the beam transformation is to be created to tie the stage variables and the key together. <clears throat> and got written to the save point file. <clears throat> so next, I will pass over to Prima to give a demo on our toolkit. Thank you, Antonio. Hi, everyone. Happy to see you all today. I hope now we have good idea about the state processing toolkit. As discussed, it has two important features, state reader and state writer. For today's demo, we will focus on the purchase application which is stateful streaming beamfrink application that receives real-time events, does some processing, and sends the processed events to the output topic. This streaming pipeline receives events from the inventory about the items that are being sold along with the quantities and the model of the product that is being sold. Since this is a stateful application, it saves this intermediate state. For this example, it saves the cumulative quantities plus the aggregated models. It also sends the processed result as an output to the Kafka topic. For this demo, after sending a couple of events, we will take the save point of the application. Since the save point is not a human readable file, we have our toolkit state processor, which could read from the save point and write it to a human readable JSON format. We will then modify the state values and then create a new save point with using our toolkit's bootstrapper. This new save point file that was created by our state bootstrapper is compatible with the Beamflink application. We will then restart our application with this new save point and see the new values are getting picked up. This is our target for today's demo. A quick sample transformation over here. We will be sending these two events as an input. 
it has the item as watch and quantity as 10 and models as apple watch series 7 and our second event is going to be watch quantity is 15 and then model is apple watch fe and our transformation would look like it will calculate the cumulative quantity as current quantity from the event plus value in the quantity state variable and the aggregated models will be calculated as a unique set of model from the event plus the model in the model state variable. So after the transformation, now the output would look like the cumulative quantity is the sum of 10 plus 15 which is 25 and the aggregated models is the sum of these two, Apple Watch CD7 and Apple Watch SE. This is going to be our output. This will be the sample transformation that we will be looking in demo today. I now have our purchase application handy. Let me start the application. So this application will receive, start receiving the events from the input topic and then process them and then send the processed events to the output topic. Meantime, I can also show you the stateful transformation. We have two different state handles, quantities and models. The cumulative quantities will be saved to the quantity state handle and the aggregated models will be saved to the model state handle. So this is our application. Let me go back to the sample Kafka consumer that I have. I have the consumer up and running where I can listen from the output events. I also have a producer where I can produce to the input topic. This is our first event. We are going to publish the item as watch and then quantity as 10 and models as Apple Watch Series 7. Let me publish the first event. Great, we have published our first event. Let me go back to the consumer and see we have received the output event. Nice, we have received the cumulative quantity as 10 and model as Apple Watch Series 7. This is good. So let's send our second event now as cumulative quant or quantity as 15 and then model as Apple Watch SE and then produce the event. Okay, we have sent our second event. Let's go back to the consumer and see if we have received another event. Okay, we have received the cumulative quantity as 25 because our first event sent us 10 and second is 15. So 10 plus 15 is 25. And then we have also received our aggregated model as uh, series 7 and Apple Watch SE. So let's go back to our dashboard now and then copy the job ID and then go back to the postman, paste the job ID and then take a save point. Okay, it is successful. Let's go back to the Flink save point location. <coughs> this is the save point that we have got. Um, let's copy this location and then go back to our uh, straight reader. Go to the config file and paste the save point file that we are interested to read. And then we are also interested to read two different state handles, quantities which have long type and then the models which is a back type. The coder is string UTF-8 encoder. So we have all the necessary information for the state reader. So let's go back and start our state reader application. Cool. This is now done. Let's go back and check our what is our output location restored save point. Let's go back to that location and then see if we have the state. Nice. Let's just see what is in the state. <coughs> we have received Apple Watch Series 7 and Apple Watch SE as models and our quantity is as 25. So this is what we have expected. So we were able to parse the state from the save point. Let's change this file to the values that we are interested in. Let's add a new type called Apple Watch Ultra and then let's change the quantities to 300. Let's save this and then we can also double check the values. 
okay we have changed the json let's now use this save point file use this json file and create a new save point let's go back to the state bootstrapper let and then we can save the save point as save point 51 let's run the state bootstrapper nice let's go back and stop our application and then cancel the job let's provide the save point as 51 so that our application can start from this save point let's start our application again now Okay, our application is up and running. Let's go back to our simple Kafka. Let's send one more event now. Um, our new state contains the quantity as 300. Let's now send 100. And then models, maybe let's send series 8. So when we send this event, our, our expectation is to, is to receive a cumulative quantity of 400. And then models should contain four different types of models. Let's send this event. nice we have sent uh, an event let's go back to the consumer and see if we have received the output event okay great so we have received our cumulative quantities as 400 because we have sent 100 now and our new state contain 300 so total is 400 and then we have four different types of models this is great so this is how we used our toolkit to parse the state from the save point and then create a new save point again from the data that we are interested in. We are also working on converting the Apache Beam compatible state to the native fling and vice versa so that the states can be switched from one application to the other and we are also planning to open source the state processor toolkit shortly. We have written a medium publication with three different detailed blocks on the use cases and Apache Beam State Reader and the State Bootstrapper. Please uh, take a look when you get a chance. We have provided the link in the presentation. Thank you so much. We are open to any questions.